hereditary spherocytosis it's an autosomal dominant condition this is autosomal dominant condition and this is the most common anemia resulting from defect of rbc membrane most common anemia resulting from defect of rbc membrane so what are the genetic mutations which are going to affect the rbc cytoskeletal protein first is spectrin what are the mutation genetic mutation the first is spectrin the second is enchirin enchirin third is band 3 and 4.2 band 3 and 4.2 out of these mutations which mutations are most frequently associated with hereditary spherocytosis so it is the spectrin spectrin and band 3 spectrin and band 3 these are the mutations which are most commonly associated most commonly associated with hereditary spherocytosis so what happens because of these mutations there is mutation of spectrin and mutation of band 3 because of this what is going to happen in rbc there is lack of biconcave shape of rbcs and rbcs are going to become rigid so there are rigid rbcs or erythrocytes so what happens exactly these rigid erythrocytes are small and the name is hereditary spherocytosis so what's the shape these are sphere shaped these are small and sphere shaped sphere shaped so the problem is that there is lack of biconcave shape rbcs are rigid because of that there is increased osmotic fragility and these rbcs are more susceptible to trapping and what happens because of this trapping these are destroyed in the spleen because of this trapping there is destruction in the spleen and whenever there is destruction in the spleen it means the patient is going to develop what hemolytic anemia what kind of hemolytic anemia is seen in patients of hereditary spherocytosis these patients are having moderate hemolytic anemia so these patients are going to develop moderate hemolytic anemia moderate hemolytic anemia and because of this hemolytic anemia what are the manifestations obviously patients are going to develop what jaundice there is folate deficiency and what else splenomegaly these patients are going to develop jaundice there is folate deficiency folate deficiency and splenomegaly splenomegaly okay another important point you know the conditions in which chronic hemolysis is going on because of chronic hemolysis there is increased risk of pigmented gallstones and which color black stones so in hereditary spherocytosis what happens there is pigmented gallstones and which one it's the black stone so since there is moderate hemolytic anemia ongoing in patients of hereditary spherocytosis and that's why the diagnosis is made by hematological workup which includes so the diagnosis is made by hematological workup since chronic hemolysis is going on so what you're going to find in such patients so in such patients there is increased reticulocyte count why because there is bone marrow response these patients are obviously having spherocytes on the peripheral smear what is raised there is increased ldh because of hemolysis these patients are having jaundice so there is indirect bilirubin which is raised there is decreased or absent haptoglobin and we discussed that rbcs become rigid what happens these are sphere shaped there is increased osmotic fragility and in these patients there is negative coombs test so here where is the hemolysis going on what happens these rigid rbcs are trapped in the spleen and destroyed in the spleen so obviously what is the treatment in these cases we have to go for splenectomy so what is the treatment of choice here The treatment is splenectomy and this splenectomy is delayed up to 5 years of age. So why this splenectomy is delayed up to 5 years of age? First, to preserve the immunologic functions of spleen and to reduce the risk of obscene children. So what is the treatment? 
treatment is splenectomy. We have to go for splenectomy. And this splenectomy, it is delayed up to 5 years of age. It is delayed up to 5 years of age. 5 years of age. And why we are going to delay it up to 5 years of age? Because we want to preserve the immunologic function of spleen and we want to reduce the risk of opsy. Now, second situation, if we have to perform the splenectomy before 5 years, if a child is there and we have to perform splenectomy before 5 years of age, in such patients, we have to go for partial splenectomy. So, if patient requires splenectomy, splenectomy is required before or less than 5 years of age. In less than 5 years of age, in such patients, we should go for partial splenectomy. We should go for partial splenectomy. Okay. Third situation, we discussed that in such patients, there is increased risk of pigmented gallstones. Which one? Black stones. So, if the patient is having gallstone also, in such patients, what we have to go for? We have to go for cholecystectomy along with splenectomy. So, if a patient is having gallstone, if there is presence of gallstones, so in such patients, apart from cholecystectomy, apart from splenectomy, we have to go for cholecystectomy. So, cholecystectomy is done with splenectomy in hereditary spherocytosis patient. In hereditary spherocytosis patient. We discussed that the patients who are having hereditary elliptocytosis, hereditary pyropoikilocytosis, hereditary hydrocytosis and xerocytosis. In all these cases, what is the problem? There is anemia secondary to RBC membrane abnormalities. In all these cases, there is anemia which is secondary to anemia secondary to RBC membrane abnormalities. If you see the first three, hereditary elliptocytosis, hereditary pyropoikilocytosis and the third is hereditary hydrocytosis. In these cases, the patient is going to develop severe anemia. In these three, patients are going to develop severe anemia. And since severe anemia is there in these three, so what is required in these cases? Splenectomy is required. Why? The patients are going to develop severe anemia. But what is the exception? Exception is hereditary xerocytosis. Why hereditary xerocytosis is exception? Because in this case, patient is going to develop only mild anemia. And if patient is going to develop only mild anemia, here splenectomy is not required. So, in which case splenectomy is not required? It is zero cytosis. So, how to remember? Zero is hero. Zero is hero. Why? Because in hereditary zero cytosis, there is only mild anemia. That's why here splenectomy splenectomy it's not required in zero cytosis splenectomy it's not required because the patients are going to develop only mild anemia so this exception you have to remember how to remember zero is hero